hi everyone welcome back to my channel sugar mama tv if you haven't already subscribed please make sure you do because i am a passionate lover of minimalism and i have an amazing growing playlist completely dedicated to my journey around minimalism so please make sure you subscribe and you click the notification button so that you always know when i upload a video so this video is actually the challenges of minimalism. I didn't want to just focus on the negative side, so I want to actually provide you guys with solutions and ideas to overcome the challenges of minimalism. Now, this video is from my own personal perspective. These are the challenges that I have personally faced when it comes to minimalism. So I hope you enjoy this video. And of course, as always, please let me know what you think about this video, whether you like it, and if you have any other challenges that you face with minimalism and how you personally overcame it. And if you are currently struggling with a challenge with minimalism, please let me know and all the other subscribers so that we can maybe help you come up with a solution. Okay, challenge number one of minimalism, other people. When you first start incorporating a minimalistic lifestyle or dipping your toe in, people may judge you, people may criticize you, People may think you're crazy and this is where you really need to stay strong and you need to stick to your philosophy and your value system behind this journey. It is hard and trust me, there are times where I really start to question myself, but when I do this, I stop, I breathe, I try and reground myself and internalize as to where I stand, what my life means. and. I then rebuild my strength and I actually try and empower that person back. Now it's easier said than done, but the way you could potentially empower someone is inspiring them. So by privately and quietly letting that people see the benefits of you living a life of minimalism. So seeing how much more time you have back, seeing how calm you seem to be and organized seeing maybe even that you've got some spare money left aside because you don't spend as much on like wasteful useful stuff anymore you don't need to put it in people's face but quietly like hold your own ground and people if they're interested will start to become inquisitive and they'll ask you questions they'll you know want to hear more about it and you never know that person that did give you a hard time about being minimalist or even laugh at you like people sometimes do to me they may end up being your biggest fan challenge number two of minimalism and of course this doesn't apply to everybody but children Rocco is definitely a challenge around me trying to uphold a minimalistic philosophy in my home he is a hoarder he loves to bring home things all the time things that he's made things that he's found on the street it's hard but I really try obviously to nurture his the, his personal development and growth but I'm also trying to explain to him some key things and principles around minimalism like quality over quantity get picking a toy that's really well made that's not gonna break into a thousand pieces over the next couple of days a toy that's going to give him lots of joy um, a toy that maybe comes from, you know, not necessarily a big commercial toy shop, but something that someone's made. Also, um, with children and minimalism, I'm, and this is what I'm doing with Rocco, is trying to, um, instead of giving him a physical gift or toy, give him um, the, you know, an experience. So give the, a, you know, a child, instead of buying them a brand new toy, buy them something like um, karate lessons or... Um, you know a, an annual membership to the zoo or something just a bit different where you could do something with that child where it's a bonding um, nurturing experience rather than just more stuff in our home another thing when it comes to minimalism and children and mess I'm really trying to take the time to explain to Rocco the nice calm energy that comes from having a clean tidy and organized space and I'm not putting it in his face I'm just gently helping him like lean into it and understand it and he is now you know noticing that the house is tidy and actually says like doesn't this feel nice and that's such a relief and a good sign for me because I can see that he's starting to get it and when we do go through his toys I actually ask him and empower him to make decisions as to what toys he's willing to let go and initially this has been really hard and he's had a bit of sort of arguments or um 
over it but he's getting a lot better at letting his toys go because also he knows they're going to someone else who's going to appreciate them more so there's also the double gift in like learning to let go and give back to other people challenge number three is being protective of your time and protective of your stuff when you're incorporating a minimalistic philosophy you have less stuff so if someone wants to borrow something which is perfectly fine you obviously need to make sure you get it back so you don't have experience any stress of um, not having that back especially if you really need it and also when it comes to time like learning to say no when it's something that someone's asked you to do that's not going to serve you in any positive way it's going to drain you um, stress you or deplete you um, it's this is really hard to to do in both work and socially but when you do it three times you realize it's actually not that hard and you also gain in my opinion um, a little bit of respect from other people because people see that you now have boundaries so it's an incredibly empowering experience to really be protective and mindful and conscious as to how you spend your time and also how you um, I guess lend your stuff or share your stuff with other people you know you you take back control and it feels really good challenge number four that comes with minimalism and that is learning to take much better quality care of your stuff now if for example you decide you're only going to have like a couple of handbags you need to make sure you you take care of those handbags that you don't let them get scuffed and um, squashed and scratched and stained and ruined you you need to nurture it and care it and honor it and pay respect to what you've purchased with your hard-earned money same things for shoes I discovered that because I didn't buy as many shoes I was wearing them out a lot more so I had to be really conscious in making sure I took them to the bootmaker who could resole them on a regular basis so that, I, so that they were able to last a lot longer and it's not just like shoes and handbags it's clothing as well you know being organized making sure that you know you've, you've got yourself um, you're not going without it's not causing stress in your life so take the time to take good tender loving care of the belongings that you choose to keep in your life and also on that note food also encompasses this as well when you go and buy food make sure that you use that food up before it goes off and if you think it's going to go off maybe share that food with other people but being really conscious and respectful of things that you use your money to pay for challenge number five the required energy that comes from maintaining minimalism in your life now that revolves around you know being you know decluttering on a regular basis doing sweeps of your house and also being a bit of a guard dog as to what clutter or things you allow back into your home if you're constantly decluttering and then going out and buying all the, all this new stuff again you're kind of chasing your tail going around in circles you're not actually really experiencing the true benefits of minimalism part of minimalism is as I said learning to say no consciously deciding what stays so when you do this you're constantly I wouldn't say on guard but you're constantly mindful of what comes into your home and also you have to be incredibly organized because you no longer have multiple pairs of things you as I said you need to take care of those things but you need to for example make sure you're always on top of your washing so that you always have clothes ready to wear um, you always you know it, I apply the just-in-time technique with my food and my makeup I will only go and buy food when I can see that it's running low or completely run out so that I never have multiple items of the same thing in my fridge or my bathroom cabinets or even in my cupboards it's I have only what I need and use love it a value and appreciate challenge number six with minimalism and that has got to be temptation temptation to buy new sparkly things that you think are going to just make you feel complete that really only last a short period of time this is probably one of my really big challenges of minimalism and it's okay it's perfectly natural obviously the challenges are what make us stronger and wiser but there are a few things you can do to help I guess control the temptation and make sure that it's more um, I guess temptation is towards a positive thing rather than you know draining and decluttering your life and things like just breathing before you purchase thinking about it do you really need this do you really want this how is this going to work with all the things that you need are you 100% sure you're going to use it and when you, each time you look at it you're going to be so glad that you purchased it you know just that stopping and pausing is incredibly powerful and also exercising some patience if there's something that you really want have a think about it before you buy it. don't impulse buy and if you're worried that it's going to be sold out 
maybe look at lay buying it. That is a great way of securing it and then also consciously paying it off with cash so that when you do eventually have it, you have it guilt free. Also, another big thing with temptation is to watch out for your triggers. Take the time to understand when you do it, go and buy something or you do go and you know buy something on an impulse that you haven't really thought about. Look back as to what happened before that. What triggered you to suddenly have this desire to go out and buy something? What are you truly trying to mask deep down below the surface? Now, for me, this could be all sorts of different things, but I would say so many purchases of mine come from something that does not sit well within me, some sort of discomfort in my feelings that I've experienced or seen or heard or felt, and I've you know reacted by going and buying something. And I was I've been very honest in sharing with you when I was struggling with after the birth of Rocco, I found myself shopping a lot more than what I should have. So really try and get a deeper understanding of who you are, what rocks your boat, what rattles your cage, so that you can put the right um, distractions in place or the right process to actually healthily go through that feeling without that you know that action of going out and shopping and buying and filling our homes and minds and wardrobes with more stuff and the final challenge and solution when it comes to minimalism and that is guilt now I think a lot of people experience guilt when it comes to minimalism particularly when they're decluttering their home and they come across something that was cost a lot of money was really expensive but they know that they don't really like and they, they can't let it go because they think no I spent all that money I can't just like throw it out it cost a fortune but if you constantly look at that item and feel bad and depleted and ashamed and um, guilty for purchasing that it's got to go because it's depleting your energy sources and it is simply not healthy for you and your constructive growth. So in those situations, I would recommend that you sell that item, at least get some sort of money to help reduce that guilt or give it away to a friend that you know is really going to love, value, use and appreciate that item or alternatively, give it to charity, someone who definitely needs that item. It's going to actually add a lot of value to them. Doing things like this is incredibly hard to process the guilt, but it is so worth it. But when you do this, the one thing that you must do in the process is stop, listen, and learn to the lesson behind the experience. What was it that made you buy that? What was going on in your life that triggered you to go and buy that thing that you never ended up using or wearing or liking? We need to make sure that when we go through this process, we actually stop and take the time to understand more about ourselves. Because remember, part of the benefits of minimalism is having a much deeper understanding as to who we are and what we are all about. Now, on the subject of guilt, I also want to point out it is perfectly okay to have areas in your life where you don't want to apply minimalism, particularly if there's an area that gives you a lot of joy. Like say, for example, you have a passion behind collecting, you know, vintage cutlery, for example, or whatever it might be. That is perfectly fine because that is your journey. That is your thing. And you, as I said, with the benefits of minimalism, you understand more about who you are and what you stand for. So make dedicated areas in your life where you don't feel the pressures and stress to apply minimalism because minimalism is actually about eradicating pressures and stress. It's about holding on to the things that you really appreciate, things that you really are grateful for so that you get more meaning out of life. Now I really hope that you are loving these videos around minimalism. I've got so many more videos that I would like to make on minimalism so if you have any particular requests please let me know. I always love hearing your inspiring ideas. They really are fantastic and I am getting through my list that you guys have given me. And on that note of video requests, I'm thinking about doing another 30 day minimalism challenge, but I would like to put it out there to you where you guys actually create the minimalism challenge for me. So if you've got a great idea for a challenge, please put it in the comments box below and I will reply back to you. I hope that you guys are having a great week. It is a Thursday, so I wish you the most meaningful and valuable weekends where you really think about minimalism and look at the way you spend your time. Have a great week, guys, and I will see you on Monday for Money Monday. Ciao for now.